Recently, I went for a lovely little holiday in Wales. And whilst I was there, I visited the Talaclin Railway. And it rekindled my love for narrow gauge railways. So much so that I bought a 4Ds kit and built this. Why don't you come see how I built it and my adventures on the Talaclin Railway. Hello, I'm James and this is my channel, Western Signalman. Now, for many of you older subscribers, you probably joined the channel because you saw my 009 build. And I am glad to say it is still around. Fort Dinrid is currently stored just below the layout over in this uh, off shot corner over here. However, it's not in pristine condition as you probably last saw it being stored on its side whilst building this monstrosity of a double O gauge layout has meant that bits have fallen off, bits have got broken, and it was also robbed of its track from the fiddle yard to help build the boys' uh, N gauge layout. But that doesn't mean I've given up on 009, not at all. My love for narrow gauge was uh, recently rekindled when I visited the Talaclin Railway. And whilst I was there, I picked up what I've been meaning to buy for some time, this 4Ds Edward Thomas 3D printed kit. Now this kit is a very lovely little model here. I'm gonna get a close up shot in a couple of seconds, but um, comes with the body, spectacle plate, uh, cab roof, and even has a 3D printed chassis, which is absolutely gorgeous for detail. Um, and really does put to shame. I just grab them from over here. The Backman model of Peter Sam. Now obviously this is a slightly less detailed model because it is a Thomas engine. Uh, still, the intention was, if you had watched my review of this, was to try and see if I could turn it into a more realistic model. Now whilst it's a very lovely die cast uh, tooling, it's uh, got its problems in that there should be daylight under here, but there's a motor here, so even any replacement such as this will not compensate for that lack of daylight passing under there. That's just a compromise that's going to have to be made. Uh, otherwise, I think this will look quite lovely replacing this. So I'm going to have a go at this 4Ds kit, clean it up, paint it up, pop it on Peter Sam and see how well it works out. But whilst I go and clean the model, I thought I might just let you see my little trip to the Talaclin Railway in Wales earlier this year. Now something I've wanted to do for many years, and something my boy wanted to do, was visit the Talaclin Railway. So this year we got ourselves a little cottage in Cloingarara, jumped on the train, went to Tottenham, and visited the Talaclin Railway. And when we were there, we were greeted by no other than Talaclin's number one, Talaclin. Incredibly, it's been over 70 years since the Talaclin Railway first operated its trains from 14th of May 1951. They were the first preserved railway in the world and started a movement that makes us so lucky today to have so many heritage railways with so many locomotives that we can go and see.
I'd studied the timetable and worked out the best plan so that we could get as many locos uh, in as possible. Now one advantage of the Talaclin is that you can go on the website and they usually have a loco roster for what's coming up in the week. Therefore you can plan what day to go and what locos to go behind. Unfortunately Dolcock wasn't running today, uh, which is a shame because she's my favourite. But uh, we had to make do with what we got. So we started the day with Talaclin. And she looks absolutely beautiful in that great eastern blue. We backed ourselves some seats in the front coach, which is one of Corus Railway's old carriages. Uh, these designs, uh, historically, were always complained about for the lack of ventilation. And I can absolutely agree that this is a major problem. As you can see, it's an absolutely beautiful day and it was sweltering in that coach. We were hoping that once the train moved, there might be some airflow in there, but we were very, very wrong. Uh, however, it is for the trip because well, look, we got to sit right behind the locomotive and watch her work her way up the hill. scenery really gave me some pause for thought. Mid Wales is absolutely beautiful. My layout, which is why I was facing around Snowdon sort of area, is very slate heavy. But I'm considering maybe going a little bit more south just to have a little bit more of this lovely green scenery and farming land. We arrived at the end of the line at Nankarol. Talaclin uncoupled from the coaches and ran round getting ready for the return journey. This stop certainly seems like a great place for kids. If you listen carefully, you can hear lots of them playing in the stream below, especially on a hot day like this. Perfect. We, however, were not stopping here. We were going back to Upper Gwenin, where there's a children's play area. The locomotive stops whilst the crew have a bit of lunch, but if you time it right, you can jump off this train, wait for another one to come in, that one will turn around, and then you can jump on that one for your next trip, which is exactly what we did. And that was our adventure with Tanner Clint. We'll go back to the model making now. I bet you forgot about that. So I just uh, washed the 3D print with uh, a grease, a kitchen grease remover, just to get any residue off uh, before painting the model. And whilst it's drying, I thought I'd take the opportunity to just take a look over it. So you have to be very careful. These uh, are bits that can break off. Uh, as shown here, this lamp, it's meant to come off, but it was just knocked off with the slightest of touches. Uh, I use this old baby's uh, toothbrush to clean things. Um, so as you can see, I was very gentle with it and still managed to knock a little piece off. So this lovely uh, 3D printed detailing here, such as the handbrake, the regulator, and all the pipe work is absolutely gorgeous. I think we have a, sort of have a little look there. It's really, really nicely done, but is definitely something to be very wary of and careful of uh, when you're working on the model. So that's the main bodywork. You can see you've got a bit more detail, the pipe work there. And that's the front of the loco and then and we just got a few little spurs here that's gonna need removing off, just cleaning up. And um, yeah, oh, I think that's quite good. There's the top of the cab, I think it's gonna blow your mind there. It's just the top of the cab, just a little bit of pieces everywhere and then uh, we've also got the 
cab uh, spectacle uh, glass to go in the windows. So, yeah. Put something in the shop rather than just filming some kitchen paper. Yeah, I think all round it's quite a nice little 3D print. Uh, as I say, the chassis is also very, very impressive. Uh, the detail on it. Uh, I don't think, I mean, I might be able to remove parts of these detail and add it to the Peter Sam chassis. We shall see. Because um, what I really like is, and I noticed it on the real Edward Thomas, is this. Let me take it out of the bag, really. Hang on. Right. So I'll take it out of the bag, it's a bit easier to have a look at and examine. So if you compare to the Backman model, I mean, you've got this this detail here is actually moulded on the chassis there. So that's quite nice to see. Uh, but yeah, as I said, the bit I liked, and I noticed it on the real Edward Thomas, was uh, coming off the, the uh, valve gear here. It's this lovely little rod that sort of moved backwards and forwards. I'd to put a little shot in of Edward Thomas moving to, so you can see what I mean. Um, I think it's absolutely delightful. And when you compare that to the sort of more basic Backman uh, sort of attempt, it's uh, it's a little underwhelming, I suppose. It's, this is still a very nice model, and it still runs really well. But yeah, it's kind. Of, and I know it's a Thomas model, but you, you kind of look at it and go, oh, the potential, the potential of what could be produced if uh, they actually did. You know, I know they're going to do Tanner clinics in in herself. Uh, but I think that's just the Scar Lowy model with the face removed and the smoke box put over. I think it still carries all the flaws that the Scar Lowy model has. But um, time will tell, I suppose. Anyway, we'll worry about that later. I might uh, rob some parts off that bit of chassis if I can. I'm just going to let this dry then. Then I'll give it a coat of primer. And then I'm going to give it a coat of paint. Now, my railway, as you may or not remember, is uh, blue for the locomotives. Uh, I think it's Humble number 15... Uh, midnight blue and I am going to cheat this time and not get the airbrush out I went and bought a tin so see how we get on with that so yeah I'll dry it off prime it up put some blue over it and then uh, it should be ready for some paintwork our next adventure will be with one of my favorite locos and that's because of uh, Sir Handel from the railway series I enjoy his rumpy ways this is the Hayden or Corus Railway number three it was a Falcon 042 saddle tank locomotive. Number three and number four from the Chorus Railway were saved by the Tanner team and conveniently were also in the same track cage of two foot three, which uh, was very helpful because there's not many lines with that track cage. In fact, the Chorus, the Tanner Clinton, one other railway that was nearby, which I named obeyed me, and I think there was one other railway up in Scotland, and that's it, the two foot three cage. So, Quite fortunate, really. Here we see Sir Hayden pulling away from the station in an impressive effort. Soon Sir Hayden had turned around and returned to the station where we hopped on board and made our way to Dolbock so we could go and see the waterfalls and conveniently be able to change trains to our third of the day. We learned our lesson with the Chorus number no. 7 coach and made sure that we got in the open coach on this train which was a lot cooler and a lot more refreshing on such a hot day. I'm not complaining, I mean we went to Wales and it didn't rain once, I don't know that happens to many people. Before Dolgok, going back towards Toyne, 
is a passing loop. And here we saw our next locomotive for the day, although we'll be catching her a lot later. Released that week in her brand new grey livery is Edward Thomas, Tyler Cleans number four, Chorus Railways number four. And that livery looks absolutely gorgeous. I also uh, made sure to take note of where the open carriage was on this set of coaches. We arrived at Dolgok and made sure that we got up the embankment to catch the Hayden departing over the infamous viaduct. What a splendid sight. Of course it's not all about trains when you go out for a family adventure like this and that's the advantage of Dolgok. We got off, checked out the waterfalls and the children even played in the street. Very cold. On a hot day like this, that's Right then, uh, it's been a week since uh, the last shot, but in that time, I have uh, let the kit dry and then primed it and painted it just with the spray cans of Humbrol paint, so a Humbrol grey primer, followed by the Humbrol number 14, no, correction, number 15, midnight blue. Uh, so this is it. I'm uh, quite pleased with the covering. That's come out all right. And it's had a few layers of paint on it, which has helped cover up the um, layering of that you get with 3D prints. Uh, in most places anyway. I've got to do something about that roof. Uh, now, I have been away for a week. Um, so I'm not sure what the weather's been like back here. But I assume the garage has got hot at some point because um, this back bit's a little bit out of shape to this. So I might be able to glue it together, but I'm a little concerned that they're not going to join up. But uh, I'll maybe just have a little look into that just to see if I can, uh, I don't know, maybe correct it with hot water or something just to put it back into shape. But we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, that's the blue one. I suppose the next job is the uh, fun part of uh, painting all the details. Told you, it wasn't, it wasn't going to be a long video, really, for the build-wise. That's why I've uh, added in that footage of the Tavakin that way. There was one other locomotive in steam that day, Tavakin's number seven, Tom Rolt. Unfortunately, uh, our schedule meant that we couldn't fit Tom Rolt in to our day. Well, we probably could have, but it probably would have resulted in waiting at a station and the children getting very bored. And uh, there's no way that we would put up with that. So, we just had to put up with the pleasure of watching Tom Rolfe arrive and depart from Dolgon. And as Tom Rolt departs, we get back to the model making, in which I'm going to confess now, I've gone and got something very wrong. Right, I'm not going to lie, I uh, thought I'd just uh, compare my uh, newly painted logo to the other two. Uh, and as you can see, they are vastly different in colour. It seems I may have got my numbers a bit muddled up. I need Mac 25, not 15. Oh dear. So, looks like the airbrush will be coming out as I correct this error. Um, I've also tried to uh, look at the back. I think I've manipulated it a little bit and it's sort of gone back into shape. So I think just a spot of glue should hold that together. Um, 
Otherwise, I might just try and put it in a bit of hot water and just see if I can just push it back to shape. I was a bit concerned that the paint might come off, but as it's the wrong colour, that doesn't matter now. Well, as you can see, I've sorted out, uh, sorted out, that's a new word, <laughs> sorted out the back of the cab. Uh, I think I was trying to combine the word sorted and straightened there. Anyway, I've sorted out the back of the cab. Uh, it was just a case of a uh, nice cup of hot water. Dipped in for a couple of seconds, you really don't need long with this plastic. And um, yep, uh, I manipulated it back into shape. It almost cooled immediately and has held into the correct shape. So I do suspect that it may have got a bit hot in the garage, um, which concerns me in the future with how this model may behave with the heat in the garage. Um, but maybe when it's glued together, it might hold and not warp. But we shall see. It may have just been that way in the first place. I'm not saying it will melt in the garage. I just don't, I don't want to put people off a 4D's kit because I don't, I don't know why that was like that. It may have just been that way. Um, that's what I'm saying. But anyway, it's easily rectified. So there we go then. In my attempt to be lazy and avoid having to get the airbrush out and do all the cleaning, etc. I had to get the airbrush out and do all the cleaning, etc. However, you can see that the Loco is in a much more better colour to match the other engines of my line. So with that done, I'm gonna just let the paint uh, dry and then I'm just going to start detailing it, painting cab roofs, pipe work, etc. And our final loco of the day rolls into the station and the influence for this video. Palaclin's number four, Edward Thomas, in the absolutely beautiful grey delivery. Making sure we got a seat in the open carriage, we enjoyed the views of Dolgot Falls from the viaduct before taking in the splendid journey back towards Dolgot. past the sheds was a real pleasure. We managed to get every loco of the line ticked off our list, excluding Douglas, who was away at the Seven Valley Railway. Midlander is actually just about visible through that window if you squint really hard. And of course, Dolgog, my favorite of the line. She looks absolutely beautiful. Really wish she was in steam, but unfortunately she was running on the next day, but we were going home. Never mind. At least I got to see her. Maybe next time, because I'm definitely coming back. So there's the loco so far. I'm just picking out a few details in the cab area there. I just found a photo of Edward Thomas's cab online, so I tried to get it as accurate as possible. Uh, just a few splashes of red need to go around, and then I just need to break, uh, paint the brake handle in a sort of more of a sort of dull silver, uh, maybe gunmetal grey colour. But uh, it's coming on quite nicely. Um, and I was quite fortunate that it was, as at the Tower Clean, um, the real Edward Thomas was just below the balcony of the museum. So I managed to get a photo from the top so I can see all across here, which is um, great really, because usually when you get photos of locomotives, it's usually from this angle. And it's quite difficult to tell how things are done on the top, etc. So uh, getting that view uh, has paid off. So there we are, That's uh, the loco's coming along nicely, just a little bit more work to do, and uh, then it should be ready to go on the chassis, and then we'll look at weathering it. Okay, here we are then, that's the body shell with the colours now painted on. Obviously it's in a very uh, workshop condition, as you can see. Um, now I do like that the cab comes off, because it allows you to get inside and paint all the details in there. 
So they're all painted up based on the picture I found of Edward Thomas's cab. Pop that bag on. Um, so yeah, there we are. It's uh, all painted and ready to go, really. Uh, next job then is to take the Peter Sam model, which currently has a coach attached to it. Uh, so I need to take the chassis out. Um, these cylinders are going to need painting. And then to go with the style of my railway company, the side rods will need painting red as well. Then we can combine it together and see what it looks like. And arriving back at Toy, you get to see how such an intense timetable has worked. So Hayden is already on the siding, ready to go and collect the coaches to start off the next service. They don't hang around either. She's already on the move and we've only just pulled into the platform. But our day wasn't just over quite yet. There's still the museum upstairs to see, which includes the Reverend Wardry's original office, in which he uh, used to write those wonderful railway series books. Also on display is his Farquhar Branch model railway and a selection of models. There's also other locomotives within the museum, including a coffee pot, a quarry hunslet, and uh, I forget the other loco, but it's one you can go and play in the cab and I can get the boy out of it. He absolutely loved pretending that he was driving a loco. Of course, for the non-railway enthusiast, there's the cafe, which, if you give gift aid when buying the tickets, will get you a discounted purchase. You can enjoy a nice pint of beer, as my wife did whilst we went around the museum. So getting the chassis out is quite simple. There's only three screws that hold it in on the model. And they are, as you can see, here, here, and here. And you just lift it off, and there you go. The quite clever chassis design is revealed. So as you can see, it's um, a, I'm not gonna assume it's a cordless motor with uh, the worms on each side that turn the gears for these wheels and for these wheels. So that, you know, pretty much you've got an extra bit of pudding power there. It's quite a clever design. Obviously, it has that sacrifice of the large mound in the cab, and that's been compensated uh, on the model by having the gap there, but it's not covered up. So when you put it over, um, the worm is exposed. So I will need some crew into this cab to hide that. Um, but I think that's probably the better design rather than having the quite large mound in the middle there. Anyway. That's the motor. I'm going to um, now paint the cylinders and the side rods and then move on to assembling the logo. Okay, so remove all the cylinders to paint was not as painful as uh, if anyone you watched my uh, Renius conversion. Uh, I managed to break the um, sort of the coupling rods, going through the cylinders on that, and um, had to improvise a way of fixing it. Um, this has been a lot simpler. I've just taken the plate off the bottom there, removed the wheels. Uh, now the motion comes out of the cylinders. They do lift up, or alternatively, you can just pull these little lugs here back and they will release, you can see on those two strips of metal there, and they are what the, get the camera and focus on the right bit, what the running gear moved back and forward on. So, it's come apart okay. If it goes back together, that's another question. And the way my modelling goes, it probably won't. So, um, <laughs> but we shall see. Anyway, this has come off a lot easier than Renis's. Uh, I'm now going to paint it in the correct colour and then reassemble. Okay, so there we are. I've painted the cylinders and the coupling rods. Um, and it was just as difficult to put it back together as I thought it would be. Um, it's just... I wouldn't say difficult, fiddly, very fiddly, but I, I have done it. And the best way to do it is to put all the motion back in the cylinder. This metal bit comes out. Hang on, let me push a point with something a little less fat than my finger. Right, with some clever editing, you won't know that I've just been playing with a whole minute trying to get this camera to focus on there. This slide bar comes out as one piece. So when you put the motion back together, what I suggest is that you uh, don't add this piece yet. You just put this bit into the cylinder, put all the wheels back in. Then once it's all screwed together, thread this very gently because it's easy to bend very gently through the plastic here into the cylinder. This can be 
pushed back. It is, uh, it's got a bit of flex about it. Push it back and then that will slot into the hole up there. And that's how to get all the uh, motion back together. So that's all painted. Uh, I think the next job then is to put body with chassis. But there is one more thing I want to do. And that is this original body is die cast. It's got a nice weight to it. And I think it's one of the reasons why the Loco runs so well and so smoothly. This is obviously a 3D print. It does not weigh as heavy. Um, so I think there may be some issues with traction, etc. And it's not going to perform quite as well as what this one uh, has. So I've had a look and I think with these two cavities where the coal bunker and storage bin would be on the loco, um, I'm going to fill them up with some lead shot and hopefully that will give the body a bit more weight, uh, which will add a bit more traction to the engine. Okay, I've added some uh, crew to the loco now, and uh, this one is the uh, probably very distinguishable, recognised uh, day pole figure. And then on this side, on the fireman side, I should say fireman side, um, this figure comes from the range called the Little People. They are sold by, I want to say Squires sell them, um, but I, I can't be certain off the top of my head. Um, however, they are metal cast, I think they're white metal cast figures. Um, I've got a few more up here that I painted. So uh, they're quite nice little figures. They've got a bit of weight to them. Um, to just make something a bit different to the standard day pole figures that uh, litter everyone's layouts. Um, and the added advantage is, he's because he's uh, obviously uh, white metal, they've got a bit more weight on the old foot plate there. So, um, that's not feeling too bad now. I think that's going to be quite good for the old traction. Uh, so, yeah, the crew are in. The windows are also in. Um, now, this, the instructions said they were varnished, but I gave them another coat of varnish just to um, try and make them a bit clearer. Still a bit misty, but it's not nothing drastic. So it's just a case now I just need to glue that on, put that on the chassis, uh, and I need some nameplates as well. As we hung around the station, we got the pleasure of seeing Edward Thomas return back to the shed. There are just two things I really wish we could do with this backman piece of sound model. Firstly, model that daylight underneath the boiler, and secondly, that valve gear, I think it looks absolutely wonderful. I love the setup, especially on the back wheel. I don't know, there's something about it I really enjoy. Right then, there is the loco painted and assembled. Uh, now, I can't find the instructions, I lost them, but I'm sure it said use a strong PVA glue. Um, and it's a tension fit to get the chassis into the body. So it just slots in, the screws aren't needed. Um, but that does, I noticed, uh, cause a bit of change of the shape. Uh, I can't quite, warping, maybe that's the word I'm looking for. Um, but uh, what I had originally done was I glued the cab on and when I put it on I realised that the, the back end had pulled away and it wasn't in line with the cab. It's still not perfect, but it was better than what it was. So basically I took it all off again, took the cab off, put the body on and then put the cab roof on afterwards. And that seems to have fitted better than trying to glue all the parts together than just slot it on the chassis. Um, I'll see how it goes. It is just only PVA glue. I've used some wood glue, just the, the old evo stick with glue um just to glue it together we'll see how it goes if that doesn't hold or i don't like it i will simply take the cab off and start again and probably move on to super glue uh so yeah i'm gonna go find some nameplates now because i do have some and i'm gonna name this engine so i found the nameplates it's the last of the set uh, i bought and uh, obviously you may recognize the name you may not but if i run it with the other Two Jack Jones and Captain Main Rearing. 
you can probably guess where the inspiration for naming these locos has come from. Um, if I can continue naming them after Dad's Army characters, I'm not sure because uh, I think I've got more locos than characters, <laughs> well, eventually. Um, and I'm also considering naming them after places on my fictional map. Um, so I'll think about that. But for the moment, the loco is called James Fraser. It's all painted and it just needs a weathering. And then it will be complete. And here is the finished loco all weathered up. And I've just simply used the life colour range of weathering paints. Um, the usual set of six and I add weathered black and grease effect to it as well. So it's mostly tracked dirt, frame dirt and sleeper grime used for the browns all around the loco, sort of concentrating the track dirt around the bottom of the wheels as well as the sleeper grime. And then we have some weathered black on the top. You can see there's just mostly where the exhaust from the funnel would be. And then what I've done on this logo, which I haven't done the others, is I've then used uh, a wash. So this is uh, Black Knight by uh, Ammo. It's just a line wash. And then I've just used that a little bit on the front buffer beam there. So when they were clearing out the tubes, so that's where the ash would build up and sort of run down the uh, buffer beam. And then just all round the sort of rivet work on the locomotive and sort of the areas where you'd expect it to accumulate dirt, same on the back, and all over the buffer beam, and a little bit around the buffer headstocks as well. So that is the loco, all weathered, finished, painted up, and ready to join the rest of the fleet. And for our last train of the day, we got to see Tom Roll shunt her coaches back towards the carriage shed. I absolutely enjoyed this day out on the Tallaghan Railway. I've been waiting for years to go on it and I really wish I'd been sooner because it was so wonderful to travel on that line. I think there's a bit of childhood nostalgia in there as well by the fact that this is the basis of the Scarlet Railway. If you haven't been, then do make the effort to go there and visit this wonderful little railway because it is absolutely amazing and really impressive on a timetable day like this of how they run the trains. With Sir Handel and Duncan in the pipeline, it's only Tom Rolt that I'm hoping Backman will produce at some point in the future. So, there's only one more thing to do really with this loco now that I've painted it. Uh, well, that was to clean the wheels. These are only some of the cotton buds. They get absolutely filthy. And considering how small those wheels are, is amazing how much gets on there. Look, there's another one. All that dirt, there are four cotton buds worth. Uh, but they are clean. And I can tell you they're clean because if we've just put a little bit of power, you're probably stopping that black when it always does. Doesn't like that bit. But apart from that, oh, I say that, there you go. It's just because the camera's on. There we are. Runs nicely. Well, I say nicely, it doesn't like that bit of black plastic there. But why aren't I using it on Ford in red? Well, uh, you probably gathered because by the fact that I said that I've already ripped some of the track up, it's not in a very good state. In fact, let me show you. So this is Ford Dinrin's current resting place uh, underneath the OOH layout. And if I take you over the board, it's very dark down here. In fact, I'm going to get a light and take you over the board. There we are, I've lifted the top board off. Um, and it's, I mean, it's still okay, but there are bits broken off it. Uh, it's too dark to really see down there, but steamroll has been knocked off, some of the cars have fallen off. Um, and I'd say the back of it, the, the fill yards had all the track robbed of it. So what am I going to do about Ford in Rid? Well, that's a question for another time, but I do have a plan. I've got an idea in mind of what I want to do, because, you know, I've built an OO gauge layout, so why not start building a 009 layout? But that is another story. 
If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button if you want to see more, especially if you want to see some 009 adventures, then click the subscribe button. And hopefully, I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. You've never seen my 009 build? Well, now here's your chance. Click on the link or watch something else.